You have shoot out the fantasy factory number one, don't you, Jason? Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Listography. Jason, Joe, and Krams are here. And today we are ranking the eight studio albums of Traffic. So uh, Traffic, of course, the classic band originally consisting of Steve Winwood, Dave Mason, Jim Capaldi, and Chris Wood. Eventually, other people would cycle through the band. Like I said, they've got eight studio albums for us to rank. You guys want to give any thoughts before we get into it? Yeah, I've probably listened to four of the eight prior to this, but none of them really stuck to me because it was all just kind of randomly listened to it. We did the 60s and 70s, um, kind of just went back and skimmed through them, reflected on them. I knew they weren't going to really get up there. Um, But this kind of elevated traffic for me a little bit. I think they are one of the better psychedelic jam, you know, kind of thing from the late 60s, early 70s. Sometimes those bands kind of blend together and the song's kind of all the same. I don't really think that happens with traffic. I think there's enough musical variety and they have enough talent to not kind of recycle a lot of their patterns and their parts and their stuff. Um, so I, I, I enjoyed almost all of this a good bit. Yeah, I mean, I've always liked Traffic. Some of their early 60s stuff, or their late 60s stuff was on, you know, my short list for top five albums. Never made it, never quite broke through. I, I think all their albums are pretty good, but I don't think they ever had like that classic, like knock them dead, every track a killer uh, album. Like that's probably kind of what holds them back in most people's mind. You know, I don't, hear a lot of people talking about traffic. I don't see them mentioned. You don't hear them on the radio that much. Um, but they they were surprising to me. Like Crams, I only probably listened to four of these albums before, or maybe five. So I was a little surprised at how good and good, you know, they are kind of all the way through. Not a lot of weak tracks, but they just, they're just kind of like never get over the mountain for me as far as like classic must listen. Although I do like a couple of their songs quite a bit. But it was an interesting one. This was very hard to rank because they're all like right there. Like I, I didn't know which ones to kind of nudge in front of the other. So it was, it was probably the hardest list that I've had to do so far. Yeah, I think like you were saying, they're they're really good. There's just nothing individually exceptional about them. Like, and none of them are bad. You know, Winwood's a guitar player. The vocals are good. The songs are good. There's good albums. There's just nothing that pivotal like sad to say you could probably go your whole life as a rock fan and never really listen to traffic and i wouldn't i don't know if i would say you're missing out but you know you can you can kind of get away with it i'm coming from a sort of similar place i actually don't know how many of these i've listened to before i know i've heard most of them at some point but similar to you guys they just like were never really a band i cared about that much i like them i never i, I don't dislike them um they just never really like registered on the level the way some bands do. I think maybe even more than you guys, I loved the experience of going through these one by one. I, I really, really enjoyed it. I listened to the entire discography in one night and then I listened to it two more times. It was, I, I really loved it. Who wants to start? I'll start because this was the easiest choice for me. It's going to be Far From Home, the one from 1994. Not too great. You know, started listening to the first song in the first 30 seconds. I was like, all right, there's that classic kind of, you know, like, latin jazz kind of traffic beat and then there's this just tremendously awful 80s arcade synth that just erupts in it and and i just felt like the rest of the whole album didn't have any great songs um you know sounds way too polished didn't really do anything for me especially because i did this chronologically and i was enjoying it more than i thought this didn't bring anything to the table that i wanted to hear by that point so this was an easy one. I wouldn't go as far to say that it's just literally awful, but, you know, wish they had only made seven. Well, I go a slightly different direction from you. Yes, no, it's, it's not my last place one. For me, my number eight is going to be Shootout at the Fantasy Factory. I think this one's just sort of boring in comparison to the Lowe's Park of my old boys, it's kind of the same thing. It all kind of drags on a little bit too long. There's only five tracks. 
I think sometimes I feel so uninspired is probably a fitting title for the last track of this album and uh, just didn't do it for me. I just think this is sort of their throwaway album. I know, it, you know, it was recorded to Steve Winwood and Capaldi and Wood and then a bunch of session players uh, from Muscle Shoals. And it just didn't have any kind of spark, any interesting songs really that jumped out at me. So for me, it's an easy choice at number eight, Shootout at the Fantasy Factory. Interesting. I've got Far From Home at the bottom with Cram. Not sure why this really even carries the traffic name. It's much more of a Steve Winwood solo album. It came out in 94, but it has this really like late 80s, early 90s, sort of cheesy, smoothed out, easy listening kind of sound. I'd imagine in 94 when it came out, it probably already sounded dated. The only really redeeming thing about this record are the vocal performances. I think Steve Winwood gives a lot of good, really soulful vocal um, takes. But other than that, not much here that's worthwhile. All right, my number seven, didn't dislike it nearly as much as Joe is going to be shoot out at the Fantasy Factory. I predict Jason will have this quite high because it sounds very classic 70s rock album oriented. The first song sounds like a deep purple song kind of, which I'm sure Jason cr- 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 creamed in his pants over, but it's... um. It's not bad. I, I, I kind of liked it, but five songs, two of them I don't care for. That's just bad math for an album. So I did not like Evening Blue or Tragic Magic very much. I did like Sometimes I Feel So Uninspired, and I like, I like Roll Right Stones a lot. But this one just didn't have the magic of the albums that came out before it that kind of had a similar style to this, and they didn't really reinvent anything. They didn't really do anything better. Um, you know, it's got a little bit more snarl to it, but it just doesn't have the touch that Barleycorn does. It's not as loose and freeing as and proggy as the early stuff, but it's not bad. Um, like I said, a couple really good songs on it. Doesn't hold a candle to the rest of the other stuff. Alrighty, for my number seven, I have uh, Far From Home, and I think it's a pretty easy choice. I wouldn't be mad if you put it at the bottom. It sounds a lot like a Steve Winwood solo album, which it basically is. Uh, I know Jim Capaldi's there, but you don't really notice him at all. I mean, if you like Steve Winwood, if you were listening to you know, Arc of a Diver or any of his 80s stuff, it's kind of like that. Maybe a little less pop oriented, but which, you know, I like. I like the, the 80s Stevie Winwood. So I definitely didn't hate it. I don't think it's great. I don't think it's a great traffic album. Uh, but nothing embarrassing for, you know, an album that came out 30 years after the band formed. I think it's fine. And I think Steve Winwood's a good enough uh, singer to elevate the material enough to make it interesting to listen to. All right. My number seven is going to be Last Exit. And this one's kind of like a borderline, whether or not we should have even included it. It's kind of collected odds and ends. The last half of it is live. So I don't know, probably not really even a studio album. Some of the tracks are decent, though. I like uh, Shanghai Noodle Factory a lot. Medicated Goo is pretty cool. But all in all, it's not like a, a great record. All right. My number six is going to be difficult for me to kind of put into words. It's Mr. Fantasy. I think it's a really good debut um, because it kind of lays the groundwork of everything they're going to do and sound like. It's got all the elements there. It's just not quite polished and as good as the rest of the stuff is going to be. You know, it's it's really interesting and incredibly non-traditional. I mean, I think that stands out of the other kind of stuff of the genre but at the same time it kind of sounds like a bit of a lame copycat of stuff that moody blues or the beatles are doing it's a bit goofy at the beginning i think the meat and potatoes in this album is right in the middle um with no face no name no number dear mr fantasy dealer um but it's kind of bookended with some weak stuff but you know it's got that folk jammy blend to it that they'll improve on a little bit i don't want to say dull but it's a little bit docile and cautious for me but i do think it's it's a pretty good debut and i think it's you know necessary just didn't on its own really hold 
a lot of uh, gumption for me, but I didn't, I didn't dislike it. I think it was pretty good. Mr. Fantasy, number six. That'll be interesting to see how the traffic fans view that one, Kramzer. For me, I guess I have the sort of accepted order. Uh, I got When the Eagle Flies, the 1974 album, the last one until Far From Home. And this one bounced around a lot. It was as high as third at one point. Uh, but one final listen kind of knocked it down a little bit. I think it's very good. I think at this point, from this on, I think all the albums are really good. I think Something New's kind of got a cool, different direction, you know, kind of that jangly, poppier sound that you haven't heard for a while. Dream Gerard is really cool. It's maybe a little too long. It's got a really cool sound to it. And I think everything on here is pretty good. I think When the Eagle Flies is a good uh, ending. Love is kind of a cool, non-traditional structure. Memories of a Rock and Roller is cool. Walking in the Wind is cool. It's, it's a cool album, but I think it's just missing like that killer track, but uh, it's a good album. A fitting way to end the classic period of traffic. Number six for me is going to be the self-titled album Traffic. Um, I think on the debut, they have a really cool and interesting sound and, and things are kind of working together. There's like, I don't know, it seems a bit more unified. On this record, the Mason and uh, Winwood partnership seems a bit strained. There's a good songs on this. I do like this record. Like Joe said, from here on out, all these records are good. But the thing that keeps this down for me is that, that it seems a little disjointed. Mason seems to have his songs. Winwood seems to have his songs. And just doesn't flow that well as a record for me. So, yeah, number six. Well, I think you, I think you drastically missed the mark there. I think it's much more unified than the debut. My number five is going to be Last Exit. I agree with what Jason's saying. It's kind of just thrown together. But I'd be lying if I didn't say I liked all of the songs a good bit especially Just For You, which has a more straight up old school psychedelic feel with kind of that Laurel Canyon layered vocals to it. Shanghai Noodle Factory is awesome. Withering Tree is great. Medicated Goo. I like the live stuff. Um, Something's got to hold my toe. Probably the weakest on the album, but, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say, you know, that I don't think it's, you know, their most cohesive and creative album, but for the seven songs on it, I really enjoy it. So... Going with Last Exit there at number five. My number five is going to be the debut, Mr. Fantasy. I like it a lot. If it had Paper Sun on it, it might be number one for me, but it doesn't because that's only on the, on the American version, unfortunately. And all the early British releases always didn't include their singles, which drives me crazy because it completely changes some of these albums and it happens with everybody but there's some really good tracks on this one dear mr fantasy heaven is in your mind colored rain all awesome dealers awesome but kind of like what Kramser said you know beginning berkshire poppies house for everyone's kind of throwaway goofy tracks uh and i think the ending hope i never find me there and giving to you is a little weak way to end it as well the meat's in the middle, and it, it's got that cool psychedelia I like that they kind of went away from later, so it's, it's sort of unique in their canon. It's a good album. I liked it a lot. I just think it's a little too uneven, just not as good as the other I have ahead of it. So Mr. Fantasy, they debut at number five for me. Joe, you said that people were going to be pissed at my placement of that, and you had it one spot next to it. <laughs> They're, they're going to be upset at all of us, let's be honest. Mm. We've lost the traffic crowd. All right. My number five is also Mr. Fantasy. Uh, this is the most psychedelic of their records. You guys are both right that it is uneven, but I kind of disagree. I think the meat of the album is the first half. Side one is awesome. I like every track among the first five tracks. Side two is a little weaker, but Dear Mr. Fantasy is great classic tune. I really like Berkshire Poppies. I think it's really cool. So... I don't know. It, it's a little bit too much like Beatle-esque sort of like popping the psychedelic sound of 1967, but it's pretty good. So yeah, good call. If, if I listened to it and you said, guess what year this came out, I'd be like 67. <laughs> um, all right. My number four is going to be when the Eagle flies, um, which 
I really dug a good bit. Um, I think it's pretty tight. I think Something New is a fantastic opener. The rhythm section and the bass is awesome. By now, like what you were just saying, a lot of the psychedelia is gone, but they've got kind of just that, you know, their rhythm section is just awesome all the time. It's always got kind of that funky jazz fusion, you know, a little bit of always got some bongos or congas going on. Dream Gerard is awesome. Really pretty ballad. Um, a lot of bands not using a lot of these percussive elements and these, you know, flutes and everything like that and great keys on graveyard people too man i really like that a good bit you know by now you know i think it's a little too straightforward to be considered their best stuff you know kind of missing a lot of the interplay and the interwoven stuff it's a little more jazz rock kind of forward but there's just too many good songs on this to not be pleased so at number four very pleasantly surprised this is one of the ones i hadn't heard i think the ones that i had heard were fantasy barley corn um low spark and the debut or and uh the self-titled so this one was really nice to listen to i liked it a good bit number four number four for me is last exit and even though it's not a real album it was just sort of the odds and sods that they threw out there when the band broke up and then they tacked on two live tracks on side two uh, i think side one is awesome in fact it's my favorite side of any of their albums and if they had made this into a real album and put anything like literally anything on side two other than live covers it probably would be number one for me i love medicated goo i think it's an awesome kind of r&b flavor withering trees really cool all the all the necessary elements are there for a great album and i put it up as high as i did just because i love you know i could listen to those five tracks on side one over and over i think they're all amazing and I wish it was a real album, but it isn't, so I had to knock it down to number four. My number four is John Barley Corn Must Die. I really like a lot of this album. I think it has some really, really great tracks on it, but the opening uh, track, seven-minute instrumental tune, kind of hurts it, and I'm also not really that crazy about the title track. It's got that kind of, like, I don't know, English folk, Fairport Convention kind of renaissance thing. It's really not... Not really my favorite type of style, but everything else on the record is really good. It's just those two tracks kind of knock it down a few pegs for me. That's my number three, John Barleycorn Must Die. Only track on it I don't like is actually Freedom Rider. I can't really explain myself on that. Just don't really like it that much. I kind of dig that mystical fairy tale renaissance style. Um, Especially, I love John Barleycorn Must Die, so we're on different ends of the spectrum there. The guitar work at the end of Stranger to Himself is amazing. I think Glad is a really cool opener and just a really good showcase of what they can do with their musicianship. And I think it's just got a lot of really cool blend of their styles, but it's it's kind of apart from all the other stuff, too, to me. So it's just kind of this weird little different dimension in their dimension where you can hear all the elements, but they didn't, nothing really came to this solution the same way that it did on this album. Love Every Mother's Son is a closer, um, really cool deep purplish organs on there. Um, so I really had nothing to complain about on this. Um, it was not in consideration for number one, my number one and number two are uh, really tight. So this one is a good bronze medal winner for me. John Barleycorn must die. All right. Interesting that I have this album, the lowest of anyone on the list. My number three is going to be the low spark of high heel boys. Great album. All of these are real close. I think between low spark, John Barleycorn and self-titled, that's, you know, this close and there's a lot of stuff good stuff on this one the, the title track really for a 12 minute long song it kind of holds your interest the whole whole way through i think it's really cool light up or leave me alone i like a lot i like jim capaldi's voice i wish he maybe sang more he sings that and rock and roll stew which are both great i could i could use a little more jim capaldi in in my life i don't know why they didn't let him sing a little bit more hidden treasures good opener kind of lose me at many mile to freedom and rainmaker i think those are probably two weaker tracks i, I kind of struggle with albums that only have like five six tracks on them I kind of always want more especially if they kind of you know there's some different styles on here and i just i don't know it just leaves me wanting more from the same album and I don't think they quite give me enough to chew on but it's all great the rhythm section is awesome Steve Winwood sounds amazing and it I mean it could be two or one 
pretty easily on any given day. So just because it's third doesn't mean it's not a great album. Uh, my number three is going to be Shootout at the Fantasy Factory. This is really, really tight between my two and three. I think it's you know almost almost just as good as Low Spark. Really, really close. I don't really see the drop off that you guys are talking about, or that most people uh, say that is there. I think it's great. Uh, I like a lot of the tracks on it. Evening Blue is awesome. Roll Right Stones. Sometimes I feel so un- uninspired. I think they're all all just like top notch and really would fit in just as well on Low Spark. So neck and neck for me. Like I said before. My two and one were really close. The reason why my number one is number one and this one I'm about to talk about is number two is because I think the songwriting is just a little bit better on my number one. My number two is going to be the self-titled Traffic, their second album. I think it plays off a good bit of stuff on the first album, but brings in a little bit more of the jazz and a little bit more of the percussive stuff. It's tighter yet grander and has this really nice tapestry of all of their elements. Songwriting's better. Really, really good soulful you know, paint brushes with a lot of songs and kind of like the little touches on No Time to Live. He also have a little bit at his core, some more prog elements to it, which I really like. And Joe was talking a good bit about Capaldi. I think his drum work on this album is criminally underrated. I've never really heard anyone talk about um, him as a drummer for this time period of all time or anything, but he's really conducting the songs well here. And it just, it has a really unique sound and a really unique movement to all of the stuff. And I think it's... uh just really, really good. Not really a bad track on it. And yeah, I, I really like in my heart want it to be number one, but I just can't. So number two is going to be Traffic Self-Titled. My number two is John Barleycorn Must Die. Centimeters ahead of Low Spark of Hyde Boys. I don't know why it's better in my mind. I think it just comes down to something like Empty Pages, which is one of my favorite Traffic songs. Kind of got that triumphant big pop feel i'm with with kramzer i like john barley corn i like that kind of renaissance fair i think it's a really interesting arrangement about harvesting barley and hops and corn for beer um which i didn't get until i read the wikipedia entry on it uh every mother's son's a cool closer i like freedom rider a lot the only knock against it for me is um the seven minute instrumental opener which i hate when bands do this it's a big pet peeve of mine but it doesn't distract too much if it had been in the middle of the album nobody would notice but why would you open a, an album with a seven minute instrumental I, I do not get that but everything else is great number two john barleycorn must die my number two is the low spark of high heeled boys this to me is where all these sort of different styles and sounds, you know, the sort of Latin percussion at times, sort of jazz rock, blues, R&B, soul, it all really comes together on this record and makes kind of a unified sound for the first time in in their career. This is, to me, the traffic sound. It's more seamless than on other albums where where on other albums you can kind of pick out all the different elements and and when they come in. But here it's really cohesive. Um, the band's playing really well. The songwriting's really good. Yeah, it's a fantastic album. I just happen to like the other one a little more, and I, I guess we'll get to that in a bit. Yeah, um, Low Spark of High Hill Boys is my number one. You hit everything I was going to say about it. It's unified. It's the ultimate traffic sound. It's reined in but expansive at the same time. Vocals are really nice and airy. Got that Latin jazz sound. With the percussion is amazing. And all six songs, I think, are just written really well. I think they're written with like this album's probably their cockiest and their most confident and it's just got a lot of swagger to it yeah i mean you hit the nail on the head i think it is the ultimate traffic album and the real winner here is the year 1971 just another amazing album from an amazing year that probably gets lost in the shuffle 1971 good lord how many really good albums this one didn't really even sniff my my list in 71 and is probably the album that I know the most of Traffic and amazing and just can't really complain about it. I did. I do really like the self-titled Traffic a good bit. That one really kind of surprised me how much going back and listening to it. I was like, wow, this is really good. So, but this one just a little bit tighter. That's why it gets the win. Well, for me, like Kramzer just said, uh, I got the self-titled Traffic album as my number one. 
And I guess it just kind of comes down to what do I prefer? Do I prefer kind of the jazz fusion of, you know, low spark, maybe inching towards on, on John Barleycorn? Or do I like sort of the R&B, bluesy, psychedelic rock of the 60s stuff? And I got to go with the 60s stuff. I like what Dave Mason brings on Feeling All Right, uh, Crying to Be Heard. It definitely has maybe the strongest R&B flavor of, of any of their albums, I think. Steve Winwood's vocals really kind of touch on that kind of white boy R&B most on this one. There's still a hint of psychedelic stuff from the debut, but the production on this is so much cleaner and better and everything sounds so much better. That kind of always held uh, Mr. Fantasy back a little bit in my mind. It's just sort of grainy. This one's super kind of bright. An inch here or there, but I think the the presence of something like Feeling All Right and 40,000 Headmen and Pearly Queen, you know, those four minute sort of three minute pop leaning songs the little r&b flavor kind of what put this one over the top for me although i, I did I, I had them all shuffled around i i had a bunch of different things at one and two i think traffic it's a safe choice what can i say it's probably what most people pick it's what the critics probably pick but i gotta go with gotta go with traffic for my number one so close so close for me i'm not going with the safe pick I'm going with the one that almost probably no one would pick. I'm going with When the Eagle Flies at number one. This record, I'm sure I probably heard it at some point, but it just blew me away this time through. I'm kind of obsessed with it right now. Listen to Dream Gerard like 10 times in a row, 11 minute song. I just can't get enough of it. To me, it's their most sonically interesting record because they're bringing in a lot of like synths and he's playing the the Moog on this a lot. It's a little funkier than any of their other albums. It's kind of got this sort of like mid-70s groove to it, which I really like. Songs are maybe a little bit more grounded than they are on some of the other records where they're a little more jammy. And I don't know. I know most people wouldn't put this among their best, but there's just something about it that I love. I think it's just a, a gem. Anyone that doesn't know it should definitely go check this one out. I gotta say, I did call this one. He did. When texting crams. I was like, it's gotta be, gotta be when the eagle flies. I thought it would be shootout, but I knew, uh, but we were on the same page because of the seventiesness of it. It was going to be, we thought your, your jam. It is so, my jam for sure. I love it. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, we aired a Radiohead remaster before this, but before that was super tramp, which I'm upset that I missed, but I was ill had fallen ill. You guys like Traffic more or Super Tramp more? Traffic is more consistent with, you know, I don't think I like any Traffic album more than Crime of the Century or Breakfast in America. Ooh, or maybe even Crisis What Crisis. Um, but I like pretty much every Traffic album. I have no problem listening to any of the Traffic albums at any time. So I, I think that sort of evenness maybe puts them ahead of uh, Super Tramp in my mind. Uh, I definitely agree that Traffic has the more consistent discography. There's uh, like half of the Super Tramp catalog that I don't really care to ever listen to again, but I do really love those, that stretch of records from them. Uh, in my all time list, I probably would put Super Tramp still ahead of Traffic, but give me a couple more years of, of listening to uh, When the Eagle Flies and who knows. Well. Valid points. The correct answer was traffic by a mile, but it is what it is. All right, everybody. Well, let us know how you rank them down in the comments. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and check down in the description for links to all of our social media. Someone commented that we should start announcing what's coming next so that they can play along and listen the week leading up to the video, which I think is a good idea. But I think we will. We will not do that on YouTube to leave the element of surprise for the people that want it. So we will announce those on social media. So if you want to know what's coming, be sure to like one of those accounts. Yeah, we will see you tomorrow with our 10 favorite traffic songs. Mm -hmm.